For those who can't afford a guided elk hunt on a private ranch or a fly fishing trip to the Amazon, this show is for you. This is Budget Outdoors TV, your source of high quality fishing and hunting locations that are affordable. You won't see us staying in fancy lodges, just over the counter, public land, do it yourself trips. Our goal is to motivate you to spend less and get out more. So one of my favorite hunts to do every year is on the Oregon coast. It is hunting for rows of elk. Now these elk are big, these elk are vocal, uh, but they are very, very elusive. They call them the ghosts of the woods because you almost never see them, right? So every year I get more and more excited because I get closer and closer to getting one of these awesome animals. And I still have yet to harvest a bull with my bow, but this is a hunt that I do every year. I do this hunt because it's inexpensive, Anybody can come out and do this. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And it's close to my house, right? This is about a two hour drive from my driveway to get out here and do some hunting out in the woods. So I'm so lucky that I live close that I can go out and I can, I can do this hunt. And that's why I like it so much. So Roosevelt elk hunting in Oregon starts for me in about June, right? So June, I start tuning my bow, getting my sight all set, tuning in my broadheads. By July, I'm out there scouting, right? So I'm looking at elk. I've got my spotting scope, I've got my binos, and I'm out there looking for spots to camp. I'm looking for spots to go out and elk hunt, uh, finding out which roads are closed, which ones are open, and really kind of getting a lay, in the, lay of the land because I don't hunt the same spot year after year. You know, it changes with fire closures and that sort of thing. I'm not always hunting the same area. So this year was an especially interesting year because we didn't have a lot of time. We had kind of a shortened season and we had to make the most of it for the days that we did have. Yeah, so early season, July and August, I'm setting up trail cams and typically I'm going out by myself and setting up these trail cams in locations that I, I think the elk are gonna be there. Because I'm new at elk hunting on the coast here for Roosevelt elk specifically, I don't know exactly where to put the trail cams. I remember the first year I came out, I, I put the trail cams like right off the side of the road and I got all these videos of these hunters walking by and trucks going by and that kind of thing. I didn't get any elk on them. And, I, and then I, I relocated those a couple weeks later and then I finally got my first elk on a camera, which is really cool because I'm starting to kind of figure out where to put those cameras. So figuring out where to put the trail cameras is just kind of a trial and error thing. And that's the way it's been for me. And in late August, the season actually opens up. So the last weekend in August is the season opener. And when the season opener happens, you're all that training that you've done all that all summer all the trail cams that you've looked at all those bulls that you've seen on the trail cams i mean you're ready to go your gear is already you're ready and opening morning it's always so exciting every single year to get out there opening morning for elk season <laughs>
I, I haven't been hunting for my whole life. I've been bow hunting for about 10 years and I've been Roosevelt elk hunting for about three years. And I'm still, I still don't have everything figured out at this point, but that's why the, this episode fits into the show so well because this is a over-the-counter tag. If you're an Oregon State resident, it's a very inexpensive hunt. If you're an out-of-state resident, I mean, there were a lot of out-of-state plates that we saw when we were hunting. We saw guys from Colorado and, and Wyoming and Washington. And those, uh, you know, even for an out-of-state hunter, it's over-the-counter, so it's relatively inexpensive. finally found a bunch of elk sign and I put a trail cam right where that elk sign was. And when I was checking the footage, I watched this bull come by and I got super excited because I'm like, Eric, dude, look, I, I, got, a, I got video of this bull right, right here. Um, it was a little four point small, you know, younger bull, kind of walked by. And then maybe an hour later, I see this cow come by and I thought, oh, that's a pretty cool shot of this cow. You know, we're starting to get some elk on camera. And then the video kept going. And then all of a sudden this big herd bull walks right before, like nice five point, really big bull. get out there and we had actually called in my first bull. I've never called in a bull. I'm still, you know, 10 years of bow hunting. I've never called a bull in. Well, this year we ended up calling two bulls in. So the first bull we called in, I actually got out of my truck and I left my bow back in the uh, vehicle. And uh, all of a sudden, I get back to the truck and I'm telling my hunting partner, I'm like, yeah, there, there's nothing here. And I hear this cracking and this crashing. So I don't know if it was a bull and a bunch of cows or just maybe just a, soul, um, a solo bull that is walking up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a bull over there. I, and I, I called the bull in. I should have had my bow. I should have been set up, but I had the, my bow back in the truck. So grabbed my bow, ran over there. The bull saw me, started running off, and, and that was it. So I called my, my first bull in and he saw me and, and he ran off. And we had heard this bull uh, over this ridge kind of do this kind of real faint bugle. And so we decided we're just gonna go crashing right after him, right? So it's late at night, it's almost dark, about 45 minutes to dark. And we both crash right after him. And we get in there and we can't locate him. We can't, we don't hear any noises. And so again, I let out another bugle and we sit there and we, we stay set up for about a half an hour, nothing. We move down to this little gully and then that bull comes right in, right, right to the call. We should have stayed another 10 minutes, we would have had him. And so I tell my hunting partner, I'm like, all right, you need to start raking. So he's back there about 15, 20 yards and he's just like raking, just like, just slowly, subtly. And that bull comes crashing in. He was probably 60 yards away and just tearing up these trees. And we could, we could hear him and we could just feel that he was right there. He was so mad. And I had an arrow knocked and I was just kind of sitting there and unfortunately we couldn't get that bull to move and 40 minutes of sitting back and 
having Eric back here raking and then having that bull rake and you know I turned around to my hunting partner I'm like that, that bull is gone but that was so cool you know called in our second bull of the season and we're only two weeks in. Instead of hunting on the coast, we're gonna go train a little bit more so we can come back for the last end of the season and hunt. So we're gonna go climb South Sister. So Eric and I get our stuff. We drive to Bend for that weekend on Friday. On Saturday, we're hiking all the way up to South Sister, right? Uh, and then these winds came and the winds weren't just on the coast, the winds were in Bend also. So we had like 80, 90 mile an hour winds kind of like pushing us back and forth. And, you know, we're up there at, um, you know, nine, 10,000 feet climbing this mountain. And eventually we get this footage of, of Eric, you know, he's kind of sitting there and he's trying to smile. Can't smile. Why it's not? too rough. <sighs> oh, man. You can see him try to like, you know, hey, I'm trying to smile, but he can't smile because there's lava rock being just like pelted at his face and kind of pushing him over and you can just like kind of appreciate how much winds were up there. I'm glad we were in elk hunting, but the conditions up on the mountain were, uh, you know, not terribly good uh, for our climb, but we did that just so we can condition. Um, unfortunately, those winds caused uh, a huge amount of forest fires in the whole Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon, uh, California. A lot of Western Oregon was, com was completely on fire. That was just a, a really weird ending uh, to the season because after that, because of the, those high winds and those fires, the uh, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Forestry Service shut down all public hunting. So all public lands were now close to hunting, which unfortunately kind of shut down our hunting. So we had two good weeks, like phenomenal weeks of hunting. We went up, we climbed South Sister, and uh, unfortunately weren't able to hunt anymore after that because of those winds and those closures. So this year was highly successful. I just didn't get my bull this year, even though we, we got about as close as we could.